what's going on everyone it's token and we are finally back with a brand new video on the channel i know it's been so long long time no see youtube thank you all so much for tuning in into today's video really do appreciate it especially after my small little hiatus from youtube but unfortunately i just had some responsibilities i had two doubles to work uh last week before the weekend and then once the weekend hit i got sick and then now um, on Monday, what what did I? I had a lot I had to finish off Monday and stuff as to why I couldn't make a video. And then now we're here Tuesday though, and we're getting up a video on the channel. Oh, and I was still recovering from my sickness on Monday, so that was the main reason I still didn't feel too well on Monday. But I actually feel really good today. I don't know, you guys could probably hear that I still sound pretty nasally though. Uh, but uh, we're here and uh, we're definitely ready to rock out and bring you guys some brand new content So thank you so much for supporting as always really appreciate it But uh, yeah, so today I thought we would just bring uh, we would build a brand new team We haven't had a showdown live in forever. So I thought let's hop up. Let's hop on showdown Let's build a team. Let's test it a little bit and then we'll bring it on to the battle spot ladder in our VGC climbing the ladder series So definitely check it out in the next video that will go up tomorrow uh, so you guys don't miss out on us first starting off with this team. And uh, just so you guys know, I will be putting up an update video here pretty soon once I know exactly uh, exact, my exact plans for like things upcoming um, here at the end of this week and stuff. So expect an update video this week, but I can't tell you exactly when because I need to uh, first finalize a few things before I can tell you all the dynamics of everything going into that. So I need to make sure that I have everything laid out before I try to hop into that, but do expect one. Uh, for today, though, uh, we have this pretty cool Stalin team that I did build because I was watching some of the matches from uh, uh, Portland Regionals. I wanted to say Oregon, but I wanted to say the city. So Portland Regionals in Oregon, uh, where Cybertron was victorious. He was the one who won the Regionals using a very strong Driftwim Lele team with also Metagross. Seems like he really prefers uh, using Metagross. I'm a little opposed to it just in the fact that Zen Headbutt and Meteor Magic do miss a lot, but a Choice Band in Metagross does do damage and... Uh, um, you guys probably saw that when we were using Metagross ourselves on the battle spot ladder. Uh, anyways, though, uh, in the video I was watching, it was Franklin. I forget Franklin's last name. Uh, he goes by Avos online against Alber Alberto Lara, one of the most well-known VGC competitors currently in the circuit and a very strong competitor, almost always tops cuts a lot of the regionals he attends. Uh, they were going up against each other, and I really liked the concept of Stalin as kind of a... To an extent, a kind of a check to the Driplum Lele archetype with a lot of interesting dynamics it was able to provide for Franklin's team, and I really liked it a lot. So I thought, why not give it a try myself? Uh, especially because I feel like a lot of my teams as of late have been pretty focused. Excuse me. Uh, they've been heavily focused on stopping Driplum Lele because it's just so strong. And uh, yeah, so why not go with a concept that I know stops it and uh, that I haven't given a try yet? So. Let's hop right into the team. Uh, starting out, as you guys can see right on your screen, we do have the Stalin. It's going to be Sandrush, obviously, so it can outspeed Driftwind before the Tailwind. It's going to have that Life Orb, so it can dish out max amounts of damage. Without having a choice banned us, I, didn't, I did not want to be locked into the moves we went for, especially like with moves like Wild Charge and Ice Fang. Just not moves you want to be locked into. Thankfully, though, Stalin has a pretty decent speed stat, so... Uh, 252 without having to go a speed increasing nature uh, with that being doubled in uh, the sand by sand rush uh, if sand storm is active Pokemon speed is doubled immediately sandstorm uh, thanks to yeah thanks to its decent speed stat not great very far from great but decent speed stat don't have to have a speed increasing nature which is really good for our damage output considering we can invest entirely in attack and go with the adamant nature which is really nice then the moves that's just going to be return it's going to be our, our strongest stab option outside of giga impact which is going to obviously this is just kind of like a nuke move with giga impact i didn't really see any last move that i really wanted i i, I looked at fire fang and stuff like that but uh, the reason I didn't like Fire Fang much was because of it would literally only be for Kartana, and at the same time, uh, I'm already running Ice Fang, and uh, I didn't want to. I, I didn't want two Fang moves, and I'm, they both can miss, and I, I want to keep moves that can miss as low as possible. Even though Giga Impact is a 90% accurate, accurate move, it's kind of just as a new class option thing, and I feel like that just worked better than Fire Fang. And then we got Wild Charge. For the drip limb and the nice frame for the guard jump so that's pretty much uh stalin just trying to dish off huge amounts of damage when it has its speed doubled by that sandstorm then we got our sandstorm center in gigalith we are going to be rocking out with rocky mz i just feel like it's probably the strongest way to run it 
Um, we're just going really standard on the uh, EV spray. We're just going 252 on HP and 252 on attack with a brave nature. We want to hit extremely hard and we want to be slow in Trick Room. So that's what we're doing there. Then we got a moveset of Stone Edge, Rock Slide, Earthquake, and Protect. Um, my team lacked ground type coverage otherwise, so I, I, I felt the need for Earthquake over Heavy Slam, but I don't know. I kind of would li also like Heavy Slam on this moveset, so that's my pretty my biggest flaw with uh, Gigalith is just trying to fit those three moves in there with also having Protect and maybe not even Protect, having Wide Guard. So Gigalith gets a lot of really good options, and it's just unfortunate because it makes it so hard to to pick those uh, those moves for your team but however i do feel like this is the best move set for us stone edge uh to hit arcanines really hard rock slide if we're under trick room just to uh be to fish for flinches hit things hard and just be annoying and then earthquake because we need that ground coverage and we already went over the ev spread oh wait hold up oh that was in special defense okay we're good all right then we move right on to tapu coco and um uh, the thing about this team is that, uh, so if you lead Stella and Gigalith against Drift Bloom Lele, uh, what exactly you you do is you switch in Tapu Koko so that you then have the electric terrain. You don't lead Tapu Koko because one, you wouldn't have the Sandrush speed boost, so you wouldn't outspeed uh, Drift Blim after it's some burden boost uh, from the psychic seeds and the psychic terrain. So you wouldn't outspeed that, and if you let Tapu Koko, the dominant terrain would not be Tapu Koko's terrain, considering that Lele is usually slower, it would be Lele's psychic terrain. So, you have to lead Stalin, Gigalith, and then you switch in Tapu Koko. So, considering that, I decided to assault, put an Assault Vest on our Tapu Koko, because I wanted to be as comfortable as possible switching in Koko without feeling like I could just lose it every time, because that was one of the huge things I did notice with Franklin, was that uh, he would switch Tapu Koko in a lot, and he often would end up just losing it right off the back. He would just get one shot by something. And while, like, I understand it's it, it's really helping Stalin hit other things really hard. It's trying to nuke things. I really don't want to just be making trade-offs with my Coco. Um, I want to still have it alive. So I decided to assault Vest and hope that we can live some of those hits a little bit better, especially like Lele, Psychic, and stuff like that when we're switching in on the Drift Blim Lele lead. But uh, yeah, pretty much you switch into Tapu Koko, then you go for the Wild Charge, and it does an immense amount of damage to Drift Blim. Almost always, uh, Oko's only had one Drift Blim live so far oh, while testing his team. And it's going to be, uh, like I said, Assault Vest with Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam, Volt Switch, and Hidden Power Fire for Kartana. And uh, yeah, we're actually going a modest nature though, just so that we can hit as hard as possible considering we don't have that life orb uh, added damage for us. So I felt like uh, going modest would actually help us a little and we really don't miss out too much uh, without having that added speed on Tapu Koko considering it's already so fast. It still allows us to outspeed Kartana. Uh, so that's good. That's good in my eyes. So I like it. Then we move on to Arcanine. Arcanine is just one of the best Pokemon in the meta. And it's pretty much like when you're picking a fire type, it's hard to have a K picking any other fire type just because their viability is so much lower than Arcanine. So Arcanine is just so good. And uh, we're going with the Ipapa Berry Intimidate uh, one. The EV spread is something I kind of want to uh, keep more to myself, but you guys might be familiar with this EV spread if you've seen it before. But um, anyway, it's going to be Flare Blitz, Snarl, Extreme Speed, and Protect. And um, I'm not sure exactly what the move set on Franklin's Arcanine was. Um, I, I did not relook over uh, th that game uh, when I did decide to build this. I kind of just was like, oh, I'm pretty sure he had that and had that. I knew the Pokemon he had, but I just wasn't completely sound on the move sets. But that's fine though, because I want to make this team a little bit unique to myself, anyways. And um so we're gonna rock out with a offensive uh offensive arcanine and it's going to have flare blitz and i was looking at other options uh could have won wild charge i feel like that was a little bit of overkill though considering we have the tapu coco and we have the stalin and we have porygon 2 who is going to have thunderbolt so i feel like that was definitely overkill and then i tried out uh close combat but unless you at least have some type of offensive uh uh raising items such as life orb extra bell or definitely choice band uh close combat doesn't do it does garbage damage to like p2 especially if it still has its uh evil light so i didn't really like that and uh so i decided to go snarl i felt like it would be the most helpful move that i could have in that slot and then extreme speed because it's really good um that priority is really really good to knock out some weakened threats 
Uh, but yeah, pretty much Arcanine Protect, obviously, just really good. And then we're going the Pinch Berry, I Papa Berry, because with Flare Blitz, we can kind of control what health we get down to when we get a little bit lower. And I like that a lot. So I'm going to rock out with our pa I Papa Berry, Arcanine. Then here's where the team really switches up from Franklin's. And he had a Rack Winid in this slot. And I just had to go with Gyarados because I just really didn't like the team's Garchomp matchup. Um, even with Ice Fang on Stalin, um, if my opponent can stall out the Tailwind, well, stall out the Sandstorm or switch to Weather, uh, Garchomp becomes a huge threat to this team. Um, I guess Porygon 2 can decently deal with it, but I just still didn't like, like, I didn't like... One, I didn't like not having a ground immunity, and then I just felt like, all right, I got four ground weak Pokemon. A ground immunity sounds great, and I want a Pokemon that just really doesn't mind facing Garchomp. And Gyarados provides that, considering it does have Intimidate, so that means that its Rock Slides do a lot less damage to Gyarados than they do to something like a Raccoonid, so I like that a lot. And uh, yeah, so uh, we're just going to be rocking out. The only fault to that is the fact that uh, Franklin had a really strong uh, speedy mode with his team in the fact with the Stellan, Gigalith, Tapu Koko, and then he had the slow mode with Gigalith, the Raccoonid, P2, Stellan outside of Sand. However, uh, we're, we're a little bit different than that considering that uh, Gyarados uses Dragon Dance to become one of the fastest, hard, most hard hitting Pokemon in the, in the meta. However, I didn't... <sighs> I, I particularly like like I like I just explained I really felt more comfortable with a ground immunity and um, I don't use the trick room mode of the team as much as Franklin as I came to realize as much too probably due to the fact that I do also have a Gyarados but I just felt like in general I just wasn't using a trick room mode as much so I felt like Gyarados didn't have a better fit and then uh, yeah I just wanted a Pokemon that was very comfortable with against Garchomp and Gyarados is exactly that. And then we get to the last member of the team, and that is going to be Porygon 2. Just a standard sassy set, Aviolite with uh, Download and with uh, Ice Beam and Thunderbolt Recover and Trick Room. So that's pretty much the team. Let's just hop right into some games and see exactly how we can go about using it. Let's see. Home, please. And let's switch that. Show all teams. There we go. All right, and we'll just hop right into a battle and see if we can win a game with this team. Um, so I have a lot of things I got to get to today. So sorry if this video isn't as long as some of, my other, uh, some of the other showdown lives we have. But yeah, I kind of need to uh, get this uh, going a little bit quicker than usual. However, we're going to run into an opponent, uh, Wakegate. I don't even know how to pronounce that, VGC. And he's going to have a team of Kartana, Alolan Persian. Uh, Tapu Fini, <laughs> Snorlax, Tapu Koko, and Arcanine. So, looking at his team, uh, the Snorlax. Oh, one thing I did want to mention was that uh, Gastrodon is an extreme issue for this team. And I've been running to a lot more Gastrodon teams, which is which sucks. As soon as I have a bad matchup against something, it always decides to start showing up. But um, yeah, Gastrodon gives this team trouble mainly because uh, yeah, we don't have a super effective hit on it, and it has a pretty much a good matchup against like everything on our team like honestly so pretty much got the only way to deal with Gastron is like giga impact stalin if it comes down to it really but um so my opponent's already locked in their team so let's figure out what exactly we want to lead uh they have the persian which makes me kind of not want to lead stalin gigalith because my opponent can just fake out either one of those two as they so choose and then pretty much just go for uh kartana's uh sacred sword or leaf blade on whichever those two they do want to proceed and go for that on so i'm actually going to lead arcanine tapu koko and uh what else do i like here um uh, yeah let's go let's go giggle it stalin in the back we'll do that even though like it's not the best i still don't think it's the worst but yeah my opponent does prioritize leading with that person it looks like they kind of went with a matchup uh really hoping that i would lead with those two unfortunately for them we do not so that's good for us i'm going to snarl as my opponent will likely set up a calm mind uh, that's fine. I, don't, I really don't want to bring anything in on that. And then I'm just going to Dazzling Gleam. The fake out does come into Coco. And we do get a Snarl off into both of these Pokemon. So let's see what uh, Finny went for. Hopefully it's not Specs or anything. And it does just go for a Calm Mind as predicted. So not bad. I'm going to go for another Snarl. And, uh, well, I am slower than a Lolan Persian with my Coco. So that kind of sucks. Yeah, I'm actually going to Flare Blitz the Persian, and I am going to Thunderbolt the Finny. 
Uh, Persian's likely going to go for the parting shot on Tapu Koko, which it does go for. Um, no reason for it to not go for that. Um, unfortunate that we are slower than that, but uh, that's fine. Uh, we'll see exactly what it goes to. Likely their own Arcanine. No, they're going to Tapu Koko, so I'm glad I Flare Blitz that slot. And they gave me the Electric Terrain, so I... Oh, and they get paralyzed, so that really sucks. But yeah, I don't agree with that play and uh, switching in Coco. Uh, oh my god, we just dodged that muddy water, though, so that was it. Lots of interesting things went down that turn, and <laughs> that was just all bad for my opponent. But, um, yeah, the main thing that happened was the fact that they gave us the Electric Terrain... They gave us a free Flare Blitz on Tapu Koko, which is a frail Pokemon, and they also, um, oh, my opponent's going to switch right back into Persian as I go for the Extreme Speed on the Persian, and I go for another Thunderbolt and get a crit on their Finny, so this is terrible for my opponent, and they do just forfeit because uh, that game is not going well for them, but yeah, uh, switching in that Tapu Koko on that slot was not the play. Um, if they had anything else other than that, I would have advised them to not to go into that other than the Tapu Koko because we needed the electric terrain to do more damage. Considering, like I said, we are assault vests, we're not life orb, we're not specs. So, we need the electric terrain allowed us to do a lot more damage than we would have done to that Finny after it set up a calm on and raised its special defense. And then, uh, and I'm not running wild charge on Arcanine, like I said. And then we also missed that muddy water, and then we got the crit, and then we also got the pair, even though it ended up not mattering to that to that point yet. But yeah, it really sucks for my opponent. But uh, so now we got a new opponent, uh, Himdale. They're gonna have a team of Garchomp, Tapu Koko, Arcanine, Celestilla, Alola, Ninetales, and Snorlax. So looking at this team, uh, Ninetales can be a pain. I really don't want an Aurora Veil getting set up, honestly, because that will make the Snorlax really annoying. I'll make Snorlax really, really annoying to what we'll likely have to go for Z moves into it. Um, I'm actually going to lead uh, Gyarados, Gyarados Gigalith. And the reason for that is because um, if my opponent doesn't lead Coco, then I feel like we're in a very solid position with Gyarados. So um, I'm going to lead Gyarados. Uh, yeah, I like Gyarados a lot. If my opponent doesn't lead, uh, doesn't lead Coco, then we can go definitely go Arcanine. And then probably Stalin in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no. Mm, yeah, yeah. We'll go Stalin in the back. I like it. I like it. All right, so our opponent does lead Coco, and they lead it with Garchomp. So that's actually like, that's pretty much like a worst case scenario type thing for us, unfortunately. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, so what we can do here is still though. So we can protect EQ, but what exactly will my opponent do? They'll probably like Tectonic Rage into us. So I'm actually just going to have to switch in Stalin. Oh god, that sounds like a bad play, honestly. I don't really have a choice though. So I'm going to switch in Stalin. Because uh, I really don't, I don't accomplish anything with just protecting the Gyarados. I don't at all. Oh, is my opponent's actually going to switch out the Garchomp? So that's interesting. That's really interesting. So we'll see how much this thunder... Oh, no, not Electrum Z. Oh, no. All right, well, that really sucks. That really, really, really sucks. Uh, what we can do now, though, is we have to go into Arcanine. Can go into Gyarados. Got to go into Arcanine. And my opponent will probably just switch out that uh, that Tapu Koko for, uh, for Garchomp. So I'm actually going to make that double because I feel like this is kind of the only way we get back into the game. And then I'm gonna stone edge the Arcanine. Oh, actually, actually, actually. I'm gonna leave the Arcanine alone for now. I'm actually gonna EQ. Let's EQ. So we'll see if the Thunderbolt comes off onto the oh my opponent switch discharge. That's probably gonna kill us. And it does kill us. Yeah, this is a lost cause. It's a lost cause. The Coco Goddess. Um uh, we don't do nearly enough damage. So yeah, that was just a bad game on my part. Um like Gyarados had a bad, had a good matchup, but my opponent leading so well kind of just really threw me off, threw me off a lot. So we'll just get one more game and then we'll call it quits with uh, testing the team. Uh, even though like that went absolutely terrible, and then the first game was just hacks. Uh, the team's actually pretty good, even though it hasn't. I, I haven't really been able to show that so far. Uh, so we do get another opponent, C Carp 22, and they're going to have a team of Faramosa. Uh, Nihiligo, Arcanine, Magnezone, Tapu Bulu, and Araquanid. So, um, really interesting team. It looks like they probably have Trick Room on their, 
on any hill ago because they do have like a, a slower half of their team and it would make sense for them to have trick room because it looks like their team's so speedy and then they can go for trick room and uh, still uh, uh, be really slow but fast obviously in trick room so uh, that's something to consider I'm just gonna lead uh, Stalin and Gigalith because that allows me to have the best matchup against Faramosa which is extremely scary to our team then from there uh, what do I want from there um, I think, yeah, I pretty much have to bring Porygon 2 in case Trick Room goes up. It's our best way of, like, try, trying to still dish out damage and stall out the Trick Room turns. Um, and then from there, I kind of just want Arcanine. Yeah, I just want Arcanine, so we'll do that. We'll do that. And sorry if you guys heard my phone go off. Uh, I was hoping no one would text me, but, uh, I get no text when I'm not recording, and as soon as I start recording, people feel... People feel like they know me. Uh, what can we do here to that new Hilliga? Uh, uh, what can my opponent bring in? They have a lot they can bring in. I'm just gonna Stone Edge the new Hilliga, just in case it switches out. And uh, mm, probably should have just Rock Slid. Oh, it's Sash. Oh. That sucks. That sucks. But at least he'll die to the sandstorm, so it's not like a huge deal. And we do get the Stone Edge off, so that's going to do a lot of damage to Nihiligo. It's going to go for that Trick Room, which is fine because Gigalith is the slowest Pokemon in Trick Room, so that's fine. Uh, so, yeah, let's go into P2. Let's go into good old little P2. But yeah, like I said, the Trick Room was pretty obvious when you look at the slower half of my opponent's team. Pretty obvious. Uh, Bulu comes in now. Bulu, which is um, extremely scary for uh, for my boy Gigalith. And there's no... Is there any way that my opponent goes for it? No, there's no way. There's no way that they go for a power gym into that, uh, into that uh, Gigalith slot. At least in my eyes, there's no way. So I'm going to play with it in mind that there's no way that they go for a power gym into this slot. So let's see what exactly they do. They go for the sludge bomb and the poison too, and they get the poison. So that's fine. That's fine. Much better than. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna double into Nihiligo. Kind of just want Nihiligo gone. Um, the only issue with that is that um, is that uh, the poison after that sludge bomb sandstorm damage and the poison Porygon 2 is actually not at the best amount of health so if this Bulu is like really offensive um, we could be in some trouble uh, oh my lord and yeah the Bulu the, oh, doesn't even take us out and that's not going to do enough damage oh well that's a very specially defensive Yeah, we're in a pickle. We're in another bad spot because I I expected I expected Ice Beam to do more damage to Nihiligo, and since it did like no damage, then our our Flare Blitz wasn't able to take it out, and I really needed Nihiligo gone that turn. I feel like we could have won the game if we somehow got Nihiligo off the field that turn, but um, it's like extremely specially defensive, and now all my opponent has to do is just go for like wood whatever on my on my uh gigalith and then just go for a power gym on my on my uh arcanine i don't know how i can win anyways i'm gonna protect and hope that we can live a wood hammer so the power gym does come out just gonna hope we can live a minus one wood hammer we do live the minus one wood hammer. can we hit a stone edge and we do hit the stone edge so there's life there's life there is a little bit of life so now it all depends on what my opponent's last Pokemon is. It's going to be a Raquinid, so there's definitely life. Uh, yeah, Bulu's gonna protect, so I'm protecting Arcanine. And did my opponent go for it on? Yes! And we got this, yes, Rocky MZ off on the Raquinid. Let's go, let's go. Get that out of here, that is game. All right, there we go. There we go. Getting that Mojo Jojo working. And now we just 
my opponent forfeits. Ah, uh, nice. He even called it out. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I could have said something before you left. But yeah, he even called the play. It was a, it was, it was pretty, it was a pretty obvious play that that was our only way of winning. Uh, but <clears throat> sometimes the, the obvious play is like there was, there was nothing else for us to do in that scenario. My opponent was definitely gonna protect their Bulu, so we protect Arcanine and we go for that Rock MZ. We knock out a rack on it, and then we win the game. Uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in into today's showdown live. If you did enjoy yourself, definitely smash that like button. We'd be so appreciated, especially with YouTube going through all these issues right now. Uh, especially content creators like me who don't even make money off their videos at this point. They can just use the support as much as possible so that we can maybe try to get to that point. But uh, YouTube's in such a, it's in such an interesting spot right now that who even knows. Um, I, I did finally move on from my previous job onto a new job. So I should start uh, really starting to rack up some money here so I can get more commission for uh, Twitch as well as get a monitor, computer monitor for Twitch so I can maybe start Twitch streaming a little bit more because I definitely want to do that a lot more. I only streamed once, but in that one time I streamed, I garnered so much support and everyone was so much friendly and it was just, it was an amazing feeling. And uh, that'll obviously, I'll go in more depth about this topic in our update video. But I just wanted to let you guys know that that's kind of where my mindset is, especially with YouTube going through these issues right now. However, I appreciate support either way. You guys all have a wonderful day. Can't wait to see your beautiful faces again. For now, though, peace out.